They say that technology is really invading every aspect of our lives. Well, in this case, it's pretty much also invading the sector of procurement. And I'd like to have a look at what are those technology and what do they mean? But before we go there, let's have a look a little bit at what happened in terms of technology to the procurement process. And I think it really started at the beginning of the year 2000, where reverse auction became very popular. It was the buzzword. And uh, throughout the years came many more innovation, making sure that the process from source to pay is completely covered by different pieces of solutions. And now uh, we have a complete source to pay process which has functions in systems that can be done and the paper has almost disappeared from the entire process let's have a look at what that store that source to pay means for an employee for example so alex he's just a standard employee and he needs security material maybe uh, fire extinguishers how does that go well just like in his private life he orders in an internal catalog but then he has a boss that needs to approve. A purchase order is created and sent to the supplier and maybe he's gonna check the status. Last thing that is required of him is to receive the goods and that has more to do with what's coming up than a function that is relevant to him. It's to receive because the next person in line, Sylvie, needs to reconcile an invoice with that receipt and with the purchase order to make sure that it's ready to be paid. Now, this is half of my smiley, we're gonna look at the other half because when Alex ordered that fire extinguisher, it came from somewhere. Where did it came from? Well, it came from the work of Takihiro the, uh, uh, that actually worked on a contract to deliver great contract terms to the procurement organization, making sure that Alex could order. And that contract did invent itself. It came from a negotiation from suppliers. Maybe that included some quality and, and certification. We had to verify that the supplier, you know, was following the rules to make sure we could use him, not to damage our PR, for example. We maybe search from new suppliers to find someone cheaper. All that based on a plan that Takahiro had to deliver sourcing savings through the organization because he had good analytics. And that's my other part of my smiley. It's the uh, strategic aspect of procurement. And what you see in green are tools to help the brain take decision because it's a lot of data. What you see in blue, it's tools. Those are tools to help the hands to order quickly. And funnily, I would say in orange, it's to help diminish the stress level of someone like Sylvie in accounts payable because we want to make sure there is no leakage anywhere. This is the procurement process. Going back to my question, the technology. What's happening now? What's this year? Well, the buzzword, it's maybe a little bit, we're not alone anymore. And that means that there are new technologies coming up into the process. Technologies in different forms and different uh, impacts. So let's have a look at some of those. We'll start with the chatbot. Chatbot is an add-on to existing solution to make it easier. Let's have a little look at how that looks like. You're gonna see an Ariba screen here. That's not really my focus. My focus is on the right, that chatbot. And that chatbot, Alex is there. Um, how can I help you, Alex? Well, Alex types his request. He says, I need to make a contract for EMEA. Could you help me out with that? And then the system, this is the chatbot working, it says, yes, for this category, I found two previous contract. Is one of those two relevant to you? Absolutely, this is exactly the same as that model that I've seen in the past. I'll select this one. Okay, cool. Now there are two suppliers that would match this in the database. Is this one of you? Yeah, it is, that's cool. Well, then from there I can select and have the contract drafted or created and the process continues. This, the system says, okay, you've created your contract. Do you want to see the clauses? Sure, here are the clauses, but there is a problem. The chatbot has already identified that problem and tells uh, Alex, look, that payment term of 30 days, that's not what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to do 60 days. Do you want to change it? Yep, I would love that. So once again, 
just clicking and the chatbot helps Alex make his decision. And throughout the process and the example, Alex doesn't need to figure out the things by himself. The chatbot has learned from his own experience what needs to be done and helps Alex through the process, but not just by default template question, it has intelligence in making sure that this is happening. And this is what we call a chatbot. That was my first technology. Let's look at another one, virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you put those goggles on with a phone, maybe your kids do this, and you look around. But you have something else called augmented reality, and this one is even more powerful. Uh, you have to think, you know when you drive your car, you look at your navigation system. Well, imagine that instead of a navigation system, it would be projected directly onto your windshield. And you're driving and you look and you see arrows on the asphalt, just like if they were painted on the asphalt. This is augmented reality. It's projection, da projection of data in your uh, field of vision so that you can see and do things. It's pretty cool. Let's go back to the previous one. I want to show you something and I'm going to play a video. You need to, hi, pardon me. So imagine that you need to uh, order a new car, maybe for an employee, maybe because uh, you're, it's a rental, maybe it's for some period. So wouldn't it be nice in the catalog if you would have a barcode and you use your telephone, you scan this barcode and zoom, you can put it in one of those virtual reality goggles like the one you're having right now and be in that car. As an example, here is a shareable car from Holland where you can see from the virtual reality where to find that car. And then you can look inside to see how it looks like and maybe to realize that that might be a little bit too small for five of your colleagues. So this was just one example of what you could do with virtual reality, but there are many cases. It's just a matter of imagination. You want to have a new office uh, space cubicles installed, why not see it in 3D before you purchase? You want to go into an event at a hotel, why not see the meeting room and the settings in 3D before you make that decision? So, and then this can go on and on. Now, at this moment, I would like to present to you four innovations that uh, have been launched last year by SAP Ariba. That was virtual reality. And as you could see with my mouse, there was a YouTube video, I could turn the video around. But of course, the best way to see this is actually to play this video on your phone, put it into virtual reality and be in that environment. And once again, in context of procurement, it lets you see things that are very far away without having to move. You can validate or view or an analyze different places uh, which are you know not available in front of you it avoids travel if we look at the next innovation those are sensors so in here let me just keep this i have a thing yeah just a thing that can be a component a supply a part anything you think of use your imagination and that's a sensor now this sensor is connected to the internet so if i call this internet and thing Together, they become an internet of things, IoT, that's the buzzword. But it means that this piece of component is now intelligent. It can take decision because if I drop it, I can see directly in the system that an order was automatically created by the sensor to make sure that there is no stop in production it will auto replenish based on a condition. This was just a shock, but it could do temperature, it can do humidity, it can do vibration, location, many, many kinds of things that can be sensed. And that's another innovation to make sure that sensors can enhance the experience of procurement to let things order by themselves. Let's look at another innovation. And this one will be machine learning. And for the fun of it, um, I was just wanting to play with the system. In my line of work, I actually have to answer a lot of RFP questions and my team colleagues have to do the same. So I thought, is there a better way? Because it's, you know, having an Excel question and I need to search, come back, paste the answer. And that database is, you know, it only looks at the words. It's not very intelligent. So I'm gonna try to, I'm loaded everything in machine learning. So I've dumped 6,000 questions and answers that we've collected me and the team into a machine learning model. And then I thought, let's ask it question. Let's look at what this gives. 
In here, if I type change management, a very generic question and I ask the system, find me answers. It looks through those questions and tries to figure out the intent. And in here, the intent might be very dry. It was a short question. Description of the process for a REBA for change management in this case. And I get those answer with star levels of this is probably a better answer of a less good answer. What happens if I change a question in, can you help me with change management? That's another intent. And this is where machine learning is very critical because it has understood that I mean something else. And now it's giving me other answers. It's actually promoting guided buying, which is our flagship innovation that helps change management by the user experience in itself. I can even use just natural language. I'm going to say, what's up with Dutch? I've just typed something that even, not even English language, um, at least spoken it is, but not. And it tells me he had different answers of, it wants to see what it is. I like this. Yes, answer. Yeah, we do Dutch. Maybe in auctions, maybe in language interface, different things. And this is what machine learning is about. Learning from a set of database, uh, a set of data, learning and taking its own decision to provide the best answer but knowing what the intent of the question is, that's really the key of what the power of machine learning is. Now, my last innovation that I would like to talk is blockchain. And this one is a little bit more challenging to explain because everybody knows what hears about what blockchain does, but nobody knows what it, what it is. So I'll try that in very quickly uh, to see if I can pull it off. In context of money, if I have money and I want to give money to a friend just beside me, I just give it in his hand. That's the end of it. That's easy. But if that friend is across the ocean, well, I'll need a middleman. I'll need a bank to actually transfer this money. And the bank, yes, it transferred the money, but basically it provides trust. A bank is a trust provider. I have trust that the money will be safe in their hands and that the friend will receive the money. And that middleman is critical to the financial system. Now, blockchain changes that approach and you'll have to bear with me a little bit and think of a magic book, a magic book that floats where everything is written. And in this magic book, let's imagine that I have money. I'll use cryptocurrency called Ethereum. You don't need to remember this Bitcoin if you've heard of that, but it's money. I have money written in the book. It belongs to me. The, the big magical book has the complete truth and it says that I have 200 coins in there and I want to give my coins to Ilex. I want to give him 50. So I simply say book, give 50 to Alex and the book just scrapes out my 200 and calculate the result. 150 less for Lloyd, 50 to Alex. And if Alex wants also to give money, the same story, Alex will just tell the book write another inscription in it, give Vilma 25, and now I only have 25. And this big magical book traces everything. It doesn't need to be only money. Let's look at this in another context. If we were going to think about the provenance of coffee, I want to see where this coffee came from. Well, when it starts traveling, I'm going to stick a barcode on the bag and I'm going to write in a magical book that this is in, in Kenya at the moment and the pouch travels and now it's in Djibouti and it continues. It arrives in Athens. It goes into uh, the Netherlands. It is processed, roasted, and then it ends up at a supermarket in, uh, the, in, in locally with again, this barcode. If it was done this way and anybody scans this barcode, they could see on the big magical book, the provenance and all the trace and that big magical book. I think you figured it out already. It's blockchain. And you can write different stories. I'm going to write another one here. I'm going to go back to Alex and Alex in my last example wants tomatoes because he works for a company that makes very, very nice uh, pies and, uh, and I mean salted uh, savory pies with tomatoes and he needs a big truck of them. And uh, so let's mix everything together. He's going to go into the system and he's going to ask a chatbot. Can you help me? And I need tomatoes. And then the chatbot will actually search the market, find the source of supply and provide different options. A smart contract on blockchain or a traditional contract? Of course, we're going to go for the smart contract 
And note here that behind the scene, we had machine learning to analyze the market. So we have two innovations here, machine learning and chatbot. So Alex is, is happy, he wants to create a smart contract and that smart contract is going to be on blockchain. So we're going to start writing the tomato story on the big magical book. And that contract will state, well, pay 1500 coins, euros, ethereum, whatever you want, pay 15,000, I'll keep two coins, to the company, the supplier upon delivery. But you will give penalties if there is too much vibration and penalties if the truck overheats because uh, we want the tomato to be in good condition. Yes, 10% penalty on each one of those. How am I going to track this? Let me just go back to the floor, take my sensor out of this thing and imagine that I take my sensor and I put it with the box of tomatoes in the truck that's going to travel and this little sensor is going to write on the magic book. So now I have my sensor sensing and somewhere in the middle around the road there is big construction and brrr, it vibrates. Oh, scrapes out the penalty or notice the penalty, there is going to be a discount here. Now there is more travel happening and then brrr, it gets very hot, the, the driver forgets to put extra power in the cooling system, the tomato overheat. The sensor again sends this out and boom, the blockchain magic book will notice this down. Now we're at my third innovation, a blockchain is the third one. So I need a fourth one, which is um, the virtual reality. We're gonna use augmented reality, the truck. It arrives at my docking area and because there is discussions and integration, he can see directly on his windshield exactly the station where he needs to go and he's helped to actually get there. That is another innovation coming into the story to make sure it is there. And I forgot the sensor, that was my fifth one. So we have them all here from, and let's see the payment because when he delivers, it gets paid and it gets paid automatically by the blockchain contract. So we had a chatbot to help Alex create that contract. The chatbot found source of supply learning using scanning the internet for machine learning to, best, to find the best source. We had a sensor to actually write on the blockchain book to track everything. And finally, augmented reality helps the driver delivers the tomato to my factory. And this is all those innovation coming into the process from source to pay. So if I push the people out and I look at the innovation we've just said, because they are really happening right now, we see the different innovation, and I'm not gonna go into the details, actually affecting all the parts of the processes that you are seeing now in a very, very interesting way. And so from now on, right now it's changing, in five years it's very much changed. Many things are going to be affected by this. And my last question is, is what about yourself?